Well, today I want to talk to you um, about how you can integrate um, emulators directly into Steam. And of course you can use emulator outside of Steam without any problem and it, it works quite well on Linux too. But um, ideally you'd like to have everything in a single place and I'm guessing most of your um, games are into uh, Steam so you probably want to have it also there if possible. So you can use this software called uh, Steam ROM Manager. And what this will do uh, is will directly uh, basically put shortcuts um, pointing to the right emulator within your Steam installation. You can grab the app image, um, as you can see here on the screen, uh, the app image, uh, the default one, uh, not the uh, 386, because you're probably using, um, you know, the typical uh, software. You also have uh, a dev, uh, dev file in case you're using Debian, but I guess most people will want to use app image uh, because it's going to be the e easiest way to, to install it. As you can see, it already have it inside here. Uh, make sure you had the uh, execution permissions, and when when you launch it, you will see this screen appearing. So here you will see uh, there's already different parcel set up on my end. Uh, so um, I will not explain them, but I will show you how to create a new parser. Uh, and the parser is going to be uh, have to be done once per every emulator you want to to use. Let's say we want to uh, write a new parser for the Nintendo 64. So you can just scroll down into the existing presets that are made by the community and you will see there's, uh, you know, um, Nintendo 64 preset for recharge uh, using, for example, Mupen um, 64 plus. Um, we can use that one then. And so, of course, then you need to have recharge installed. Um, so that's available in most distributions. Uh, I'm on Arch right now, uh, by the way. <laughs> And um, you can search now for um, the libretro uh, file, I mean, the in the library that will be used uh, by, by Mupen, which is the uh, Nintendo 64 emulator. Um, and depending on your distribution, you will either have it within Metro Arch or within your uh, repository um, in your distribution. In our case, in, in Arch, uh, it's all in the uh, repository. So you can look for uh, Nintendo 64, for example, here, and you will find um, there is uh, the Mupen there. Uh, now you can just look for Mupen uh, itself there and you will find the Libretro um, library there that will be uh, used by this emulator. So you can just install it now. It should be pretty small and pretty quick to install. So now you're mostly done in terms of uh, what software you need uh, to run this and uh, you will see uh, you can uh, check also where, which rich watch you're using so to find out the path of, of your rich watch installation. And also this is where you will find the actual library uh, where you, you install your cores for rich watch, so lib, lib retro. This will vary um, based on your installation. If for Arch, this is <coughs> where it's installed, so uh, roots, lib, lib retro. Um, and it will be installed in other places, so you, you have to find out in your installation where it's actually installed to, to, uh, to use it as parameters. Uh, you will see it requires um, the executable um, to, to have the actual path to Richwatch, so you can just directly put it here, because otherwise it will not find it. Then this is the, the argument used by uh, the shortcuts, and you have to remove the first part of this, so uh, before the slash, and then this is where uh, you, uh, you insert um, the, the typical uh, root folder, I would say, of your Libretro core, um, files. In, in this particular case, it's lib, libretro. And then you're mostly done there. We'll then use the file path. Then you need to indicate where are you, uh, your ROMs located. So you, you just open it to uh, your, your ROM directory. Uh, in our particular case, it's going to be where we have uh, Nintendo 64 ROMs. Of course, uh, we don't recommend piracy or anything, so make sure you already own those games and you dump them uh, using actual um, originals. Then you need to uh, select your Steam Global directory. Uh, in most of your case, it's going to be your home user uh, .steam and then Steam folder. This is the one you should be using, which is uh, where you will find the steam.sh uh, command line, which is what uh, the emulator is looking for. User account should give your user account name, the one you want to install it to. Um, and then um, you will see also, um, yeah, you can now save and the, the presets, the parser preset, and then test the parser to make sure it finds other titles. And you will see here, it found two titles, Super Mario and Yoshi's Story. 
and um, now you're ready to actually test it. You will see, uh, now I can go into preview and preview uh, when you generate app lists. Uh, make sure, by the way, uh, Steam is not running. Generate app list will actually run all the different parsers and find all the different um, apps or, I mean, at least uh, ROMs that will fit uh, those parsers. And it will also find the right um, images, like grid images that are used by Steam. To, um, to display the shortcuts. And you will see you can filter by uh, Nintendo 64 and we find the two games we just added uh, in our particular case here. And you can change the, the shortcut, the, the Steam Grid shortcut. Uh, typically there's multiples uh, that you can choose from. <coughs> and some are great, some are not so great. So up to you to, you know, to get one that, that matches your preference there. Uh, once you're done, um, you just basically then uh, can click on the save app list, but make sure Steam is not running yet because you will need to modify the VDF file for Steam. So uh, Steam needs to be uh, not running anymore. And then we'll merge the entries and once you are done, you can then launch uh, Steam from there. And when you launch Steam, uh, you should now see uh, new shortcuts which are created for uh, those emulators or at least those ROMs. Uh, and this should appear as uh, Nintendo 64 and 64 category on your side, so you can you can also filter from there uh, if you don't want to mix it with your your typical games, uh, which are uh, the native or, or proton games. So we are there, and then you will see that on the side um, have some of my um, emulator games, and when you click on the shortcuts, uh, here is Super Mario 64 and Yoshi Story here. So if you click on the play button, it will actually directly interface with RetroArch and launch the game through it. And um, if you configure everything properly, this should work directly and should be uh, almost invisible, like, I mean, seamless. Um, and then from there, as long as you configured um, your controller to be, uh, you know, using the, the controller profiles, the, uh, using the online updater, Within Richwatch, it will directly recognize uh, properly your, you know, Xbox uh, controller or your your uh, DualShock 4 controller or whatever. So uh, it should be almost seamless uh, as long as you you've used the online updater. Uh, you can also, um, you know, update uh, different assets, or uh, in our case, we also be interested into, uh, you know, apart from the control profiles, we'll be interested in the the, the shaders as well. You can apply shaders uh, to your games. Um, so you have to first update those shaders to, to make sure you don't know the latest version and the full list. And then um, now if you, when you go to the actual the emulator settings, you'll be able to see um, in the emulator options, you'll be able to see um, the shader uh, configuration options. So we'll see in the quick menu there. And then options there. Uh, you have the shaders at the, at the end. And um, of course, here in the core option, you can also modify the resolution of the game in case you want to make sure it, it uses a net resolution or a slightly better resolution. You can also <coughs> modify everything that's that's core related. And then you can apply, as I mentioned, the shadows uh, settings. And then you can um, actually choose from a lot of different shadows, uh, shaders that will help uh, to make the game look better or look different, depending on whatever uh, you like, kind of filters you like to apply to the game. Uh, for example, eagle filters typically used to uh, to make uh, lower risk uh, games look better and higher risk screens kind of things. Uh, you have motion blur, you have reshade that add like bloom filters, this kind of things, uh, which don't really always look good depending on whatever you want to achieve, uh, and so on and so on. So you have a lot of actually of, of options um, available um, to you know to modify the look of the game or to improve the look of the game. Um, and uh, I would recommend you, you play around with it, um, especially for, uh, you know, Game Boy games or like, you know, uh, Game Boy Advance or like very low resolution games. If you if you play on a higher res um, monitor, it will look pretty bad. So you probably want to apply some shaders to, to make it look acceptable uh, to play on a, you know, high res screen. Uh, you can turn them off, of course. You can also change shaders. You can have like several a, a pipe of shaders applied one after the other. So retouch like will give you that kind of flexibility, which is great if you want to apply <coughs> different shaders one after the other. So as you can see, the game runs exactly as expected. Uh, it's not very surprising because it's not a very demanding um, game to emulate these days. And then um, now you can 
uh, exits, recharge, uh, and then bring back to use to Steam. And then you can change to another um, you know game, Yoshi Story, and so on. And you will see again it will launch <coughs> pretty much seamlessly, um, just like if you're launching uh, any kind of game on Steam. So um, yeah, that's mostly about it. I think it's great that you can uh, you know enjoy also all the games. Uh, directly within Steam, so I thought it was a good way for you to uh, to maybe find this out, how to do it easily. You can actually do everything that I mentioned manually by creating, creating your own shortcuts and so on, but the Steam ROM Manager software makes it just easier, uh, so you don't have to worry about about doing anything by yourself. It's really it's it's almost a click and click and play solution. So that's why I would recommend you you use it, uh, and it's fairly straightforward to to understand how it works with the passes. All right. That's it for today. Um, if this was interesting, if you like what we're doing at Boiling Steam, I would recommend you, you subscribe to what we do. Consider supporting us on Patreon and so on. And thanks again, everyone. And have a great day and a great week ahead.